right, ever get that feeling, you know, where you hear a band and something just tells you there's there's got to be more to them than than what's on the surface. That's mm. Lagwagon for me. They've always been more than just, I don't know, just another punk band. Yeah. So today we're ditching the greatest hits, the typical like, uh, you know, surface level stuff and really going deep on lag wagon okay their creative process those those lyrics man they're not always sunshine and rainbows no. right and how they've stuck around remained relevant for get this over three decades it's nuts that's pretty impressive and we're not just pulling from wikipedia here folks Look, yeah. we've got a live concert recording from uh 2012 paris wow paris plus a stack of interviews reviews the whole shebang. We're talking about capturing the energy, the ethos, the real lag wagon. The vibe. I like it. Because, let's be real, skate punk, it's a start, but it only scratches the surface with these guys. Right, they're more than that. They've got those fast, melodic, oh, so catchy anthems, absolutely. But their music, it wrestles with some pretty heavy stuff too, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what's fascinating is how they, how they manage to walk that line, you know, that tightrope between staying true to those punk roots, but also like evolving as musicians, you know. It's a tough balance. It is a tough balance. And they've even said it themselves. Mm. You know, they've talked about how they have mixed feelings on being labeled as just, quote unquote, a skate punk band. Yeah. Especially with their taste in music. I mean, these yeah, guys, like, come on. they have a wide range. Who else tours blasting Steely Dan in the background? I mean, that's not your typical punk rock fair. Mm. No, it's not. And, yeah. and that really speaks to their to their depth, you know, they refuse to be put in the box. I love that. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's let's back up a bit, you know, for those who might be new to Lagwagon. Yeah, let's do a little a little Lagwagon 101. Exactly, exactly. So formed in 1989, California punk scenes in full swing, right? These guys carve out their space with this fast, melodic, undeniably catchy sound. You hear a Lagwagon song, you know it's Lagwagon. Right, oh yeah. And crucially, they signed to Fat Records, I mean, the Fat Records, you can't get more synonymous with punk rock, you know, that DIY huh. artist like first. Rarity, yeah. So. Mentality, absolutely. And that's the thread you see throughout Logwagon's entire career, this fierce independence, this constant, like, self-reflection almost of selling out, which, by the way, is something that's been, you know, thrown their way more than once. Oh, yeah. It's like a rite of passage, right? Right. Any band gets big enough, the accusations start flying, but... Let's hold off on those debates for a bit. Okay. Let's talk about the music itself. Let's do it. Their debut album, duh, 1992, This Thing Hits the Ground Running, raw, fast, and get this, recorded in three days. Three days. Wow. It's lag wagon cutting their teeth, and you can just, you can feel that raw energy in every single track. Yeah. But it was trashed in 94 that really, really put them on the map. I mean, it's stoking the neighbors, rust lazy these are skate punk classics instant classics wow. then in 95 they drop hoss often considered their most what their most musically diverse album would you say that's accurate i i think so i mean you've got you know you've got those those classic lag wagon hooks super melodic mm -hmm. but then you have tracks like violins which shows a softer side for sure it's true and then on the other end of the spectrum you have ride the snake heavy subject matter dealing with a friend's heroin addiction yeah, that's what I'm talking about when I say they don't shy away from the heavier stuff. No, they don't. And and <laughs> that's I find so compelling about Lagwagon. It's yeah. it's that um it's that willingness to be vulnerable, to confront like the messy, the difficult experiences. There's there's realness there, you know. Absolutely. Definitely no sugarcoating with Lagwagon. No. And that that trend continues. Nineteen ninety seven, double platinum drops, and yeah. there's a noticeable shift. Yeah. It's moodier, more introspective. Some even say like you can hear those early hints of where Joey Cape would go with his solo work. Right. Then boom, nineteen ninety eight. Let's talk about feelings. I mean, come on. Tracks like May 16th, Going South, just grabbing you by the heartstrings. Oh, yeah. This album cemented their ability to really dig deep into complex emotions. Yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing. They didn't just like ride the wave of the 90s and call it a day. Right. They kept going. Blaze in 2003, Resolve in 2005, Hang in 2014, Railer in 2019. These albums might not have the, I don't know, the same iconic status as their 90s stuff for some people, but but they show a band that refuses to stagnate. And and I think that's key to their longevity, right? Totally. They could have easily just kept, you know, putting out the same same sound over and over again. Yeah. But they chose to evolve. Yeah. Experiment. And frankly, to challenge themselves and and challenge their fans. 
I think that constant push, that striving for growth, uh-huh. that's what keeps them relevant. You're right. It's kind of mind blowing when you think about it. It is. Decades in the music industry and they're still pushing boundaries, still evolving. It's incredible. But um, before we before we go too far down that rabbit hole, I got to ask. OK, what's up? The band's name. Lagwagon. Ah, uh, yes. You gotta admit, not your average band name origin story. <laughs> no, not at all. And it's actually it's it's pretty funny and and so fitting, I think. Yeah. You know, considering their sound. So tell me, tell me more. Well, apparently, when when Joey Cape was a kid, his his mom was let's say chronically late. Okay, I can relate to that. Chronically late, like late enough that his brother nicknamed her the conductor of the lag wagon. No way. The conductor of the lag wagon. That's amazing. <laughs> it's like it's like they were destined to be fashionably late to the punk rock party. <laughs> I love it. Okay, but on a slightly more serious note, we can't ignore, you know, kind of the the elephant in the room, those skateboarding roots. They've yeah. they've expressed some some mixed feelings about being pigeonholed, but you can't deny that connection to the skate scene. It played a huge role early on. Oh, absolutely. I mean, their music, it, it embodies that that raw energy, that rebellious spirit, that that sense of, of community, all those things that were just like synonymous with with skateboarding in the in the 90s. You know? Sure. But as they've said themselves, they're musicians, first and foremost, you know, their music, it's meant to be. It's meant to be listened to. It's meant to be like absorbed and experienced on on a deeper level than just a soundtrack to, you know, to a kickflip. And that's where I think those deeper themes come into play, right? So let's let's dive into those lyrics a bit. Okay. Because remember, we're here to understand what makes Lagwagon tick. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, one thing that really jumps out when you when you dive into their lyrics, especially especially in their later work, it's it's this um, like a disillusionment. Yeah, like a, a real disillusionment with society. Right. Take take Hang for example. Yeah. You know, it's not just it's not just catchy riffs. You yeah. know, it's it's a full on critique of of consumerism. You mm-hmm. know, political apathy, that feeling of of just being overwhelmed by the system. You know. So it's less about like tearing down the walls and more about like dissecting how the walls got there in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And they're and they're doing it all while while grappling with their own their own personal battles too. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, heartbreak, addiction, loss, even even that fear of of becoming jaded, of losing that spark, that initial like that fire. Yeah, that fire. It's it's all there in their music. Which which I think is is especially poignant, you know, given given what happened with with Derek Plore, their original drummer, yeah. Resolve, their 2005 album that was right. written after his his death, and it's man, it's raw. It it really is. You can you can feel yeah. the the grief in that album, mm-hmm. but also this this like. Um, Determination. Yes, this determination to, to keep going, to, to channel that that pain into something something creative. It's powerful. It is. It is. Yeah. And and you know, it also kind of ties into another recurring theme we see with Lagwagon, this this search for for authenticity in a world that that often feels, you know fake. Fake. Exactly. It's something I, th- I think a lot of us wrestle with, right? Uh, like how do you how do you find what's what feels real, what's what's actually true in a world that's just saturated, you know, with it just just noise. Yeah, and and Lagwagon, they're not they're not afraid to to ask those tough questions, both both in their music and and in interviews. Mm-hmm. You know, they've they've talked about the struggle to to stay grounded, to not let like success or or cynicism kind of taint that that initial love for for creating music. Uh, that actually brings us back to to that concert in Paris, 2012. Oh yeah, because we have this transcript and and it's amazing. It's like it's like you're you're right there in the middle of the mosh pit. Uh, like, and and what really struck me was was how how their music it translates into this this raw chaotic but also like weirdly cathartic energy. It, it's that connection, right? Yes, that connection with the audience, that that shared experience of just just letting go and and being present in the moment. And and there's there's this one moment um, during during May sixteenth actually that that I think really really captures this perfectly. Okay, you you gotta you gotta tell me paint me a picture of what happened. Okay, so picture this, right? Joey Cape, he's he's singing, the the crowd's going wild, and and suddenly this this tiny girl, I mean maybe maybe five feet tall, she jumps up on stage and just starts just starts dancing. Well, not even dancing, just like just moving. Yeah, just totally letting loose, feeling the music. I love that. And, and the best part, what? Joey, he doesn't miss a beat. 
he he just grins at her, gives her a nod, and just and just keeps singing. That's awesome. It was this this beautiful unscripted moment of just just pure shared energy, you know, yeah. of of being totally present in that moment. See that that's what's so great about live music. Yes, those moments where the artist and the audience are just just totally totally in sync, you know. Totally, and and it it really speaks to to Lagwagon's whole approach, I think. You know, they're, they're not up there putting on a show. Yeah. Right. They're up there sharing an experience. And it's real. And people feel that, which is probably why they have such a, a dedicated fan base after all these years. Right. But speaking of, you know, their longevity, we've we've talked about their their evolution, their willingness to to go there with their lyrics, you know, tackle tackle some tough, tough subjects, their connection with their fans. I mean, what do you think is like the secret sauce what is it about lag wagon that has allowed them to endure when so many other bands have just kind of faded away Ooh, that's that's the million dollar question isn't it right um i don't know if there's like one one magic formula yeah. but i think i think for lag wagon it's it's got to be a few things you know mixed together yeah like what well i mean their energy you, you hear a lag wagon song and it's just it's undeniable they bring it every time oh but but it's also that lyrical honesty, you know. They don't they don't shy away from being vulnerable. They're willing to go to those those darker places and I think that resonates with people. Oh, for sure. And we can't we can't forget their like their musical chops, right? I, I mean, mean, they can write a catchy, you know, 3-minute punk anthem in their sleep. Oh yeah. But then turn around and create these like these layered complex songs that you just keep coming back to again and again. Yeah. No, you're you're right. It's But Maybe the most important ingredient, it's authenticity. Oh. Okay. They've they've weathered the storms. Yeah. The criticism, the the whole like selling out accusations, but mm. but through it all, they never they never strayed from their artistic vision, you know. They've consistently followed their own path. Yeah. And and that that honesty, it shines through in their music, in their interviews. It's you know, it's kind of powerful when you think about it, that that commitment to to being true to to yourself, to your vision, yes. especially in a world that's that's constantly trying to put you in a box. Right. So I don't know what what does this all mean for you, the listener, right? Right. I think what we're learning is that Lagwagon, yeah, they're they're more than than just a band. You know, they're yep. proof that that staying true to your vision, embracing vulnerability, it it matters. Yeah, it resonates. And if if you haven't already, I, I highly recommend diving into their their discography. I mean, this deep dive, this was just a taste. Just a little glimpse into the heart of a band that spent over three decades, man, challenging norms and pushing pushing the boundaries of, right. of what punk rock can be. But we don't we don't want to just leave you with with our thoughts. Right. What what resonated with you? What what surprised you about about Lagwagon? What's what's your go to Lagwagon track? Hit us up on social media. Let us know. And and until next time, keep diving deep into the the music that moves you. <laughs>